Hello, hello. Welcome to Miriam's Space. If you're new here, hi. If you're returning, I literally love you. So this is my channel. We talk about fashion, trends, social zeitgeist. Join us if you're interested. Let's get into it. How to be an ethical consumer in this day and age. You see me looking down. I have my notes because in my homeworks. What is a trend? I define a trend as a fashion piece or moment of fashion that is essentially come back. What is a trend cycle? Pictures of the trend cycle here. It talks about the process of how trends form and how they come and go. Trends will come and they will go. Beginning of the trend, designers says, okay, this is what's popping for the season. Celebrities are front row, they see the stuff, start wearing it on their everyday life. Influencers, they also get gifted it, looking in it, doing the little fashion videos. And we say, that seems dope, that seems fly. I'm gonna get that and start wearing it. Or you know it, everyone gets it and then it loses its allure and then it dies. What's their motive? Who starts them? Why do they want us to wear this? <laughs> The answer is consumerism. It's consumerism. They want us to just consume mindlessly. But I'm here to change that. I'm flawless transition to my next step of how to consume ethically. Analyze it. When you see a trend on TikTok, on YouTube, ask yourself, do I actually like this? Or have I seen like a thousand renditions of this trend? Is it appropriating a culture in any way? You don't want to be canceled. We don't. It's, it's not pretty. It's not cute. For example, with ballet court, putting bows in your hair at the end of it, that part I think is fine. But then the problem becomes when they do the twisting around their hair because it reminds me of indigenous tribes, native tribes, how they braid their hair with the ribbon and how that's their culture. Doing it because it's a trend kind of invalidates their culture. It could be problematic and is problematic. Just be mindful of which parts of the trend you want to partake in, which ones you don't feel comfortable with or that don't align with your brand and who you are as a person. Why do you want to be on trend? What is your motive? That you genuinely feel like it can help you elevate your style? You want to belong? You want to feel cool? That's fine too because we're human beings, we want to belong. Why it's important to you to follow trends, to be on trend. Does it go with your current pieces? Evaluate your closet vibes. Does this piece go with my style? Does this piece go with what I actually like to wear right now? Does it fit my style values? Comfortable, is it authentic to me? Not for longevity. And this trend lasts long and the piece last long as well pro tip if you can always like stay on the past trends like the 90s trends the early 2000s trends the 80s trends if you can stay on that you're always going to be trendy because those things are always going to come back in style just study past decades fashion and you can organically build your style and always be on trend so that's my tip that like, this is intel i'm sharing with y'all i don't tell nobody else this wait it out just pause Take a pause, take a breather. Sit for like one to three months, think on it. If you're washing the dishes, just observe. If it pops up naturally, that's probably a sign that you like it. Pumping your gas, and you're like, man, Adidas gazelles, man. Those things actually look pretty cool. As for the wait time, I wait anywhere from one to six months. One to three months, if I'm like testing the waters, just seeing how it does. Three to six months, if I want like a longevity out of that piece. Versatile, is it durable? There are questions that you have to ask yourself before you invest in a piece, a quality piece. Watch how other people are kind of going through the trend, styling the trend. You see, I guess I'll do it. If you actually want to, if you actually feel good about it. Next up, seeing the pieces. Pinterest is such a good place for just like seeing what it is you want to buy. Like just go in there, type in exactly what you want, down to the details. This is not sponsored. If you see me out there, me, you know, I'm never, I'm never too fly to say what up. You can see how other people are wearing it. Have an idea of how you want to wear it, what it looks like. Then you can go through your closet. I know you thought I was going to say open your pockets. Well, we are a pocket friendly channel. Check what you have. 
I know you have a pile of clothes sitting somewhere that you don't want, that you're thinking of donating, because I do too. You know what you're looking for, see how you like it, make sure it's comfortable, try them on, make sure their quality feel good in them. Next thing would be to organize a clothing swap with your friends, with your siblings. Just kind of see what of their pieces that you like, that you find are on trend, and that you want. So this is a really cost efficient way. Stuff you don't want, I have stuff I don't want, but swap it. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Thrift store. <laughs> My favorite way to source pieces that I like. Um, they've really never filled me. Only just certain pieces that I still haven't found in the thrift store. And if you can't find it in the thrift store, there's always online secondhand shop. Bay, Poshmark, Depop, Vinted, Thredda. Real, real high quality pieces for a sensible price. Once you're online shopping, you can try it on. Just try and make sure it's your size. If you can, get your measurements to make sure that it will fit you. Make sure that it's things that align with your style. If all else fails, if you can't go through your stuff, which bombastic side eye, you can't organize a clothing swap, maybe you ain't got no friends. There's no thrift stores where you live. You can do fast fashion, everyone's the same. The whole point is to shop ethically. I know, I know, but some people literally can't help it. Low income and middle income people have no choice but to shop fast fashion, and that's the reality, but it is what it is. Unless you're doing $200 haul on TikTok every two weeks, then we have beef, and then we have a problem. You can really go in there and get swayed by all the deals, you really can't do any of the others, is to consider making it. If you can't find it anywhere, consider making it. If you can, if you have the time, the patience, the resources, you're gonna have a lot of pride in your item. You're gonna say, wow, this is something that's unique to me. I made this for me, by me, democracy, unique piece that you're not gonna find anywhere because I did it myself. You can get cheap fabrics from the thrift store. The craft store has supplies that you can get. You really wanna take it a step further. You can revamp your old clothes that you don't like anymore. So knit, embroider, do patchwork. The options are endless. Pretty much my final point, let's remember that in the current trend cycle world, where your motivation is for partaking in trends, like me, just enjoy using it as a way to explore your style, expand your style, that's fine. You just want to feel like you belong, you just want to find community in the fashion world, that's fine too. Just being more mindful about how we consume these trends and why we consume these trends can really go further in slowing how fast these trends cycle through. I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you like it, like it. Tell me you liked it if you like it. Comment what you want to see from me or comment any tips that you have for other people who want to ethically consume trends. Subscribe to my channel, hit the post notification bell. See you in the next video.